I hate NPC music. This is actually a smaller YouTuber. I'll do a little shout for him if it's a good video. We'll already shout it out. I hate NPC music. NPC or non-playable character is a term used to describe the simulated people you interact with in video games. They're often one note, almost uncannily robotic, and often very entertaining. But I hear this term used more often today than ever before. Not to describe video game characters, but to describe real people in the real world. As our society becomes increasingly digital, I see more and more of these NPCs being documented in the wild. I think it's disgusting that you're working at this time on a Sunday. Okay, wait, so what does this have to do with music? Look, in our modern dystopian world, there's more genres of music today than ever before. Like, what is hyperpop or dubstep? A pilgrim would be terrified of the- What's the biggest genre of NPC music? If you listen to YouTuber music, you're an NPC. Like, if you turn on PewDiePie versus T-Series rap, and listen to that, or like Jake Paul, you, like you're an NPC, right? And I don't care what YouTuber it is either. Like if you listen to, to YouTuber music, like every day, bro, you're an NPC, right? The Mask, is that dream song? I just think like, dude, some YouTubers make good songs, but it's just like, dude, like T Taylor Swift people are NPCs. I wouldn't say they're NPCs. I would say, they're trapped in <laughs> Taylor Swifties are trapped in a personality around Taylor Swift. That wouldn't make them an NPC, right? A non-playable character would be like somebody with no brain, right? They have a brain. They're just obsessed with Taylor Swift. These words. But there's one genre of music I hear only saying that because of Brooke. No, I just said they're obsessed with Taylor Swift. Brooke is obsessed with Taylor Swift. I wouldn't say she's an NPC though. Biggest NPC audience, Yeet fans. No, because they defend Yeet so hard that they couldn't be an NPC. Yeet fans fight for their fucking life to, to, to prove that Yeet is a good rapper. Hear people talk about more and more every day. A classification that almost doubles as an insult. NPC music. Chances are you've heard this term tossed around in a comment section, maybe on TikTok. But what is NPC music? And more importantly, why is NPC music? Does that make sense? Let me explain. When people call something NPC music, they're usually referring to a kind of soulless corporate pop that you hear playing in a Target or an Apple commercial. So that's oh, your answer. Oh, like radio music. NPC music is pop radio music. Yeah. Except not quite. While it's easy to boil it down to that definition, it's important to remember that the Billboard charts have held both songs that are commercially successful. Nah, The Weeknd. If you listen to The Week, I, I'm not even dissing his music. But if you, if you wholeheartedly just always listen to The Weeknd, I remember when that shit was on the radio every fucking day. Oh, it was the same song over and over and over. What fucking song was that? Dude, it was it was in like it had to be in like 2018 or some shit. Was it Starboy? Yeah, Starboy. Ah, yeah, but he, it's just like his music doesn't sound like NPC music. Yeah, Miley Cyrus maybe. And also critically acclaimed, or at the very least beloved by a group of fans. For every Dua Lipa or Brendan Urie Taylor Swift collab, there's a SZA putting out insanely commercially successful but also widely beloved songs. Okay, so it's not a type of song, so then maybe it's a type of sound? Let's take for example Oliver Tree's new song with KSI, the, the sports drink guy. I've heard a lot of people describe this song as NPC music and I can't help but agree. Well, partly because it's a typical and blatant attempt at a vanilla pop hit, but everything from the verse to the chorus and hook felt like a verse and a chorus and hook if that makes sense it was catchy it was energetic but yeah there's something about it there that just felt generic and something that also made it feel soulless which is a word i'm gonna use a lot in this video so strap in look i'm a huge fan of oliver tree i don't even want to include them in this video and this is a pretty brutal example are y'all a fan of oliver tree's music yeah but i feel like sometimes he tries too hard to be unique not with his music but like just how he acts, right? I don't know if that's, that's, that might be just how he wants to act, right? But I feel like sometimes he's just like, it's like, tr it's like noticeably like trying too hard. Example, like there's a lot worse offenders. Let's go over them now. Maroon 5 is one of the most successful bands nah, of all- Nah, you're an NPC if you listen to Maroon 5. Straight up. Nah, yeah, I'll, I'll give, I'll give that one. That's Imagine Dragons, right? Is that Imagine Dragons? Wait, no, that's Maroon 5. I just said it's Maroon 5. Is that Imagine Dragons? I always think they're the same fucking group. Who the fuck is Imagine Dragons? Who the fuck are these people?
like I've listened to their shit. I have never, I have never seen these people in my entire life. One of my friends gave me a hypothetical the other day, actually. He said, he said, Joe, if a group of four guys walked up to you claiming to be Imagine Dragons, would you believe that they're Imagine Dragons? And I said, well, how old are they? Uh, and he was like, yeah, probably like mid thirties. I said, yeah, hundred percent. Cause why would they ever lie? I, I would have no idea. I wouldn't care because I, it, it wouldn't phase me if I met the Imagine Dragons. Right. But I, why would they lie about that? Time. Love them or hate them, they are a genre-defining once-in-a-generation act. They sell out arenas, they top charts, they've been famous for two decades. And yet, when do you hear anybody say, I can't wait to go to that Maroon 5 concert, or I just spent my- Macklemore! That's what it is. If you listen to Macklemore in 2023, you are an NPC. You are a computer. If you listen to fucking Macklemore, oh my god. I like him. He, I looked at his cock. I was looking at fucking StubHub the other day, trying to find fucking uh, tickets for like different concerts. Bro, his his front row is like a hundred dollars. He like it's like twenty bucks to go see Macklemore in the stadium. Like it's uh, it, because nobody wants to see that motherfucker. Resold tickets for twenty bucks. Check on Maroon Five merch. In my case, literally never. So who? Thrift shop. Oh yeah, that that's a fucking NPC song, dude. Who are all these people? Maroon Five has more hits than I or anybody knows. I can go through their catalog and find songs that I didn't even know I knew. Radio hits that were always on in the background burrowing into my brain, but never interesting enough for me to say, hey, who is this? I think that's the root of NPC music. There are countless songs like this. Charlie Puth is another great example. Everybody agrees he's a musical genius. He's had success that few artists have seen, and yet every single- Yeah, but you never listen to a Charlie Puth song and go, oh my God, who made this? That's what it is. Yeah, dude, that's a fu- oh my God, yo, he's so right. That's what would make NPC music. That or just music that people listen to that have, like, legitimately no fucking intellectual thought. Early Puth song I hear has this empty feeling to it. Like you've heard it before, or rather would be indifferent to hearing it over and over and over and over again. Like the Oliver Tree song, it feels like it's trying to be a song. And more often than not, it works. Non-Christmas Michael Blue If you listen to... Michael Bublé's Not Christmas album, that's NPC. But this kind of soulless, factory-made music- Any Madonna song ever. Music is exactly what makes something feel like NPC music. Somebody They're too flesh. polished, too organized. They sound manufactured. Marshmallow, another great example. So much commercial success, but what is his cultural impact? Besides, like, Fortnite. It's great at being pleasant background Yo, that music. that Marshmallow concert was so dick. I went to that shit. Anybody else attend the Fortnite Marshmallow concert? My God, bro. I had the worst time ever. It was fucking awful. It was so boring. I, I remember running around just being like, when is this shit going to start? And then fucking Diplo got on the goddamn TV screen. Real life Diplo. And he was like, what's up, guys? We're going to have a sick Fortnite concert. I wish the gritty was there at that point because somebody would just be like, but just inoffensive enough that you don't really even notice it. Most of these NPC songs seem to work on sound and catchiness first and lyrics second. And if you break down these lyrics, they're just cookie cutter concepts that anybody could relate to. Most of these songs are either about love or heartbreak. Sad or happy. And he showed the weekend! What did I fucking say? Most of these songs are either about love or- Oh! Oh! Oh, but my chat said I'm fu- Oh, I'm wrong. I mean, also this guy could be wrong, but- I'm going to say that this guy is 100% right on all of his fucking takes because I agree with him now. Kid Leroy. Oh, fuck. That's NPC music. Good songs, but damn, are they overplayed. Better happy. And I'm not a music critic, but come on. Some of these songs, who wrote this? So there we go. NPC music is overly produced pop music that caters to the lowest common denominator in order to maximize reachability and commercial success. Except... Come on, of course it's a TikTok section. Look, I thought that was a rap, but I've barely- Yo, I fucking love this guy. Yo, shout out to Mint Cow. 
even begun to scratch the surface. That's because a lot of NPC music and a lot of the people that are calling music NPC music are online on apps like TikTok. Classic offenders are all of those Disney or bad songs, nursery rhyme parodies, and more recently the whole song from the perspective of anxiety just got absolutely- Yo, you ever get a fucking promoted song that somebody pushed to the uh, tier for you page? Like an artist that pays to get their song pushed on your fucking for you page? Oh my god, it's always the worst fucking lyrics ever. I love why I listen. I listen to the whole fucking two minutes, dude, because they're so bad. And I, I, I don't want to be a hater, but I want to be like, dude, give up, right? Like, fuck. Like, it couldn't, it couldn't be worse. Like, I know they're trying, but it's like they're buying so much shit to fucking run this their dream when they make garbo music garbo dragged all of these have been heavily criticized for being npc music but why unlike the other songs we covered these are just people making music from their bedrooms I not major pop acts. yo what i'm gonna say though is i respect i'm gonna have a take here that might piss people off most musicians are attractive people if you are not an attractive person your success in music tanks, right? That's why they have that one fucking game show. What is it called? Where they face the other way and then they turn. What the fuck is that called? And then this, and the fucking dickhead from Maroon 5's on that shit too. The Voice. Is it The Voice? Yeah, The Voice. Yeah, no, they have, and, and they face away and they just listen to them, right? Because if you're, if you take like a broad, if you take a lot of artists that are mid- that are attractive, if you remove the fact that they're attractive, they wouldn't be famous. It's like Maroon 5. Well, ignore the fact that a lot of these people- Radiohead's ugly as fuck. I'm not saying there aren't artists that are ugly. I'm saying many artists are also good looking. Somebody said Post Malone. Shut the fuck up. Post Malone is a, a very sexy man. Well, actually do have major label backing and are kind of just- He got better looking, I will say. He looked a bit scruffy in 2018. Editors- if I if this is a YouTube video, post Malone. Then post Malone now. He looks better. Deceptively masquerading as just another person on TikTok making music, which is definitely evil. That's a whole other video. These songs still have the same soulless yeah, menu. Here's where everybody spams hi YouTube. Oh my god, no way! I'm gonna see my name. See, it's so crazy how I'm gonna cut out. I'm gonna get my editors to cut out everybody that says hi YouTube. I'm gonna blur the chat. Yo, yo, editors, blur the chat here. Factured pop sound. The biggest problem with these songs is that they're committing the same lowest denominator every song offenses, but they're trying to wink wink their way into being like, oh, I just made this song, guys. Should I drop this? Which ironically makes it worse. I'm not here to say these songs are good or bad. That's up to you. But there's an undeniable feeling here. Something derived of personality or authenticity. Pair that with the fact that these songs are often trying to take on extremely personal and emotional issues like anxiety or heartbreak. And you get the perfect mental ick. It's like, let me open up to you guys. Let me be fragile. And then immediately showing what is an obvious attempt at just making a radio hit or the next viral sound. And I would argue this is the greatest artistic contradiction. Music isn't a corporate invention. It's an expression, one that's not bound by culture or language and has existed as long as humanity has. You don't need a Spotify subscription or be born with perfect pitch to find yourself casually humming to yourself or singing in the shower. It's a human activity. No, that is facts. Do y'all know anybody that doesn't like music? I know some people that are indifferent about it, but like everybody at least has, even if you, you're somebody that doesn't like music, there's still a song that you like. Like, there's still a song where that shit comes on and you're like, yeah, I'll listen to this. So when you take something so genetically baked in our brain and run it through this paint-by-numbers corporate process, something that creates the most vanilla and inoffensive product possible, only to take that and try to just paint on a shiny coat of humanity and relatability at the last second, and you have something that just feels like fake sugar. Fake sugar being a perfect example. We have so many artificial sweeteners, but no matter what we do, we can never perfectly recreate the exact taste or feel feeling that real pure sugar gives us. Our brain just unconsciously knows. I would argue just like this music. So I think we have our answer. NPC music are songs that are trying to be songs. They're made in a vacuum to hit every single mark correctly. But feel that- I wish she talked about influencer music too, because that's, that's the definition of that shit. People that blow up on social media and they're like, mm, how do I make a fucking ass load of money in a short amount of time? Oh, I know. Let me make some cookie cutter fucking song about love with a shitty music video behind it. 
about some guy breaking up with me or a girl breaking up with me or getting cheated on like every other fucking goddamn TikTok artist that makes a fucking song. Actually resonate or impact our emotional brain. The exact part of the brain that makes music sound so good. I'm, I'm happy with that. I think that's, I think that's good guys. I think above all else, music is subjective, right? A lot of this music is still mocked by the general public, but they still have their fans. Go to the comment section of any of these songs and you'll see a lot of people that genuinely love and support. Yo, let's go to the comments of a Macklemore video. What was the one, what was the one uh, thrift shop? When you haven't heard it in years, it just hits different. My mom and I would sit at a computer desk in the living room of my childhood home and watch this video. She thought it was the best thing ever. We still jam to this song. Oh, my God. Remember, kids, this song will go down in history. Jesus Christ. Or the artist. Are these people just NPCs? Well, I would argue we all are. I've definitely been an NPC before. I can't lie. There are times where I've driven for like a half hour and then I kind of just wake up when I'm done and I'm like, did I just do that drive? I don't have any memories of that drive. Oh my God, did I hurt anybody? Or there's times where I just go shopping and like my brain doesn't turn That happens to me all the time. I'll zone out and I'll pass a stoplight and I'm like, did I just run a red? Like no part of my body knew whether or not I fucking just ran a stoplight back on until I'm leaving the grocery store. Even scrolling on my phone is a distraction, giving my brain a rest so I just don't have to think. Am I any better than the people mocked on the internet? Am I any better than Maroon 5 fans? Music is not a precise thing. Not even Marshmallow can be boring to everybody. And honestly, that's pretty cool. At the end of the day, not everybody is even into music. Some people barely listen at all. In that case, say they're just like a working class mother of three, of course their favorite song would be That's What I Like or Sugar. What motivation do Bruno Mars? God, every fucking mom loves Bruno Mars. Which just annoys me. I don't know why it does, but it does. Like, every mom is just a fucking Bruno Mars fan. Does she have to go discover Duster or Glitch Pop? She's got three kids, and Bruno Mars is hot. Why so is that a thing? Maybe because he's a, a very attractive man? No, he makes... Because he makes music that is like kind of the 80s funk vibe in 2020. Even though I went into this trying to define NPC music, I kind of look at it differently. Still, this phenomenon is not going away. In fact, I think it's gonna actually get worse. As music tools become more accessible and people can make radio quality songs from their laptop, more and more of this soulless music can be made from people whose tools technically outpace their understanding of what makes a song truly great. Also- Yo, you know what I learned the other day and Brooke brought this to my mind? Name a good Kanye West song. Somebody said Runaway. Somebody said Stronger. Kanye West. What you'll notice about a lot of the songs, somebody said Flashing Lights, right? Listen to Flashing Lights. It's like, boom, psh, flash, light, fight. And then Kanye gets on the mic and the song just immediately gets worse. I listen to Kanye West's music, but what I've come to notice is the songs Kanye West is most known for, he is a lot of the time in less of the song. Some of his best songs are collabs where the best parts he's not in. You can say that's an L take, and I also disagreed with Brooke, and then I went through my top five Kanye West songs and all of my favorite parts weren't Kanye West. It was either the other person in the song or just the fucking, the beat, right? Because he has some good ass fucking beats in the back. I'm unsubbing. I don't, I'm not dissing Kanye, okay? I'll listen to Kanye's music. I will say he's kind of crazy for the recent shit he's done on fucking, on the news and shit, but... His music, a lot of it, is better known for his beats and the people he's with. AI music is gonna be a thing and that's gonna be even worse. But I think there's an inspiring takeaway from all of this. This kind of music can motivate people to go out and discover songs they actually like, that do things differently that they think are cool. So at the end of the day, maybe NPC music is good after all. Except no, a lot of it still sucks. That being said, guys, this is a rabbit hole I did not think I'd fall down into, but um, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know in those comments down below. What are some songs? Bro, this guy is so fucking dope. Shout out to him again. What other fucking content does he make? Trump, Biden, Obama ranked the best rappers. 
Oh, this is his latest video? How the fuck? Oh, this was seven months ago. Oh, he hasn't done YouTube in a bit. Bro, that video was so fire, though.